Horror films can be great metaphors for issues. What better idea to make a horror film based in a horrible place to live in, a housing project. So you have this white graduate student who wants to come and slum it in the projects and learn. I don't remember thinking, wow, they handled this, this really well. But, you know, from a horror perspective, a boogeyman in, in public housing, I don't think anything had really been done like that before. When you think about horror, particularly at that period, you're almost exclusively taking place in suburban towns or out in the woods someplace. And always teenage white kids. And the fact that Candyman took place in the urban city brought it more relevant to a lot of people. This is where all the candy mans and candy ladies of the world live. All those vampires, all those blood suckers and moochers of the government dollar bill, from food stamps to welfare. And what is that fear based on? It was manipulated by uh, the real estate people when it came to blockbusting. Oh, I don't think Mr. Candy would sell to them. Take another look. But how are we going to keep this neighborhood good? We don't want undesirables. We don't want land values to take a nosedive. These people are going to bring down your neighborhoods. And they're going to probably rape your daughters. They're going to steal from your homes. It, you know what I'm saying? So it was all based on nothing. I knew where I lived a long time ago was valuable. It wasn't a privilege to be here. But somebody screwed up and put us here, and eventually they're gonna get us up out of here. Okay, now look carefully at this picture, and then this one. There's that really interesting moment where Helen, describing how the apartment that she lives in, in many ways mirrors Cabrini Green. Nested within it is actually a reference to Carl Sandburg Village. The first daily administration used federal funds to create what was supposed to be low-income housing, but then decided that it was too nice um, for low-income families and instead sold those units off to more affluent whites, which might be where the Virginia Madsen character is supposed to be living. This was the official um, jacket that they handed out. Unofficially, the production company gave us t-shirts that normally you'd see Candyman shot in Chicago on a jacket or a t-shirt. And our t-shirts were Candyman shot at in Chicago. <laughs> So that was what uh, everybody went back to LA with. The art department actually brought in garbage. If you're somewhat ignorant to the film industry and how pictures and movies are made, and you're thinking, look at all the garbage in Cabrini Green. There was some garbage there, but we, we still brought in more, you know, more garbage as set dressing to set the atmosphere. And a year prior to the film's release, there was a kind of boogeyman-like character who was haunting the South and West Sides. Um, he was known as Homie the Clown, a, a reference to the Damon Wayans character from In Living Color. Y'all pay special attention because this one has a certain message to it. And the stories were circulating to such a degree that the police began to sort of take them seriously. Those stories and, and those fears and anxieties and in many ways mirror the ones voiced in the movie which is that there's all of this sort of violence occurring within public housing. And in many ways, it's, it's seemingly meaningless. And people aren't paying attention to it or don't care about it. So if you can use something like an urban legend to kind of give that violence a kind of shape, that's easier to make sense of it. In 1999, CHA, the Chicago Housing Authority, started the plan for transformation, which was supposed to remake public housing, creating mixed income communities. They had started that while we were filming there. The taller ones had been closed. I am not a fan of the plan for devastation because there really was no plan for transformation. The plan was to get the people out of the land that is highly valued. A lot of residents who left public housing ended up getting a voucher and they ended up moving to horizontal segregation by going into other poor, under-resourced, black segregated neighborhoods on the south and west sides. Uh, I recently went back to my old neighborhood just to ride around and it felt very eerie. 
like a horror movie. It was like, where are all the people? If the film came out today, would it still play? It has some basic ideas that I wish the film had explored more. It could explore more the class divide. It could have explored more the racial divide, which I really don't think it kind of teases at, but doesn't really get into. Could you do a Candyman in Red Hook in New York? Could you do a Candyman in Ferguson? Why have there been horror films about slavery? Say, the ghost of dead slaves coming back and getting their revenge on the descendants of the slave masters. I think I just gave somebody an idea. <laughs>